guys, so today we're going to be talking a little bit about the ventral line. So the ventral line is basically a connection of muscles and fascia that runs from the hyoid apparatus up in the horse's head all the way down to the hindquarters. So when someone talks about the jaw release or the pole release and how that impacts the horse's hindquarters and their ability to engage their hindquarters, that is what they're talking about. So we can sometimes see pretty significant differences in how a horse is going just by working on that TMJ, the pole, or the hyoid mobility. So I got pretty lucky the other day when I was filming uh, a horse I was working with. Uh, sometimes I film just to, in the hopes that I see something interesting or to kind of check myself on my cues or on my body mechanics while I'm doing uh, mobilizations. And I was lucky that this time working with Rocco, I caught something pretty interesting. So we'll watch him when we first start out and he's kind of stiff. I don't know if you guys can see how his hind legs are kind of just moving like sticks. There's not a whole lot of movement in his hocks. Um, and it is the same way when he's trotting, but I'll let you guys watch. And what I've done is kind of overlaid angles when he comes by the tripod here. So here he is before and then pop, there goes our angle. So we're at 110 degree angle there. So the smaller that angle gets, the more hog flexion we're getting. And it's not exactly a perfect setup because I go off camera a lot and I'm only able to measure when he comes like right in front of my camera or it's gonna be kind of skewed. So I apologize for that. But like I said, I didn't know I was gonna see this. I was kind of just filming for the heck of it. So here I'm going to go in two times speed for a little bit because this is kind of long, but we're going to let him warm up, get nice and warm, and then I will measure um, our hawk flexion at a trot. So that is my attempt to kind of negate any uh, like warm up effect that he is getting more hawk flexion just because he's not as stiff because he's warming up. I'm going to try to measure that right at the end and right here. This is just a little tidbit. This is a note in waiting for the horse to process and release. I'm gonna stand here with Rocco for, this is two times speed, remember? So this is like a minute of standing with Rocco, letting him process before we get that lick and chew and relax there. So now I'm just gonna let you guys keep watching. Um, we'll measure his hock flexion at a trot here pretty quick um, and then I will do a little bit of a mobilization with his pole and his lower jaw and then we will watch him go a little bit more and then some more angles will pop up to measure and then I'll kind of recap at the end but for now I'm just gonna let you guys watch without me uh, interrupting too much.
So I said I wasn't going to interrupt too much, but here we are at the point where I give him his first little mobilization. And what's really interesting about this is I was not planning on doing any kind of pull release or any kind of jaw release, but Rocco here is definitely asking me for that. I wasn't really sure if he was trying to nibble on me or what at first, um, but he leans right into it. And then when I kind of give him this little lower jaw protraction here, he seems to really like that. And then he asks for it again when I let go the first time. <laughs> More please. So that's what gave me the idea to do it this time. I really honestly wasn't on my mind before. So again, another little tidbit of paying attention to what our horses are telling us uh, can make a really huge difference. Okay, so here we are at our second little mobilization. Um, and what I found really interesting this time is how much Rocco wanted to turn and tip his nose to the left. So that, if I kind of look back, that happened the first time, but I wasn't paying as much attention. This time I could really tell. So I kind of ask him here to stretch to the right, and I'm not 
jerking him back to the left. That's him saying, no, thank you. I don't really like going to the right. I'd rather go to the left. So I'll try to give him a little stretch here. He takes that a little better, but still, no thanks. Rather go to the, to the left. So then I'll give him a little lower jaw protraction again, since he liked that so much the first time. I'm gonna get a nice little lick and chew there. And then we're gonna zip it up to two times speed again for a minute. Uh, before we get to our next measurements. So we come to the end here. I'm just going to recap kind of what we saw um, throughout that session. So first up, we'll see his before at a walk. We have 110 degrees. So remember I said smaller numbers mean more flexion. So after the first mobilization at a walk, we are down to 106. And then after the second one, we're getting 101. So that's a pretty significant improvement there. Then at a trot, we started at 97 before, and then we're down to 88 after. And then after the second one, we're about the same. It's 89. So not a whole lot of difference at the trot after the second one. So that's pretty interesting to me. And I do feel like it demonstrates pretty well uh, how mobility up there at the pole and the jaw can impact our mobility way back at the hind end of the horse, even in the hocks. So this last picture I'm gonna show just kind of takes you through a couple screenshots of his posture at a trot from the beginning up at the top left all the way down to the bottom right where he looks pretty good. So thank you for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, and if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you liked this video and want more like it, Please don't forget to like the video and subscribe to my channel and I'll see you guys next time.